Okay, one final element to this lesson that keeps going on forever. So if you've forgotten what the focus of this part of the lesson is, what I'm trying to teach you is why does the Second Continental Congress shift its opinion? When the Second Continental Congress first meets in May of 1775, a majority of the 56 delegates don't want to break from England. They want to try to fix the problem. But by July 4th of 1776, a little over a year later, all of them are voting to declare independence from England. It's probably this, the single biggest moment in American history, quite frankly. And the question becomes, why did they change their mind in that year? And we've looked at two reasons already. The first was the rejection of the Olive Branch petition by King George III, and the second was Thomas Paine's common sense. That's what we finished last class. The third and final reason that the people in the Second Continental Congress ultimately embrace independence instead of reconciliation is because of this thing called Lord Dunmore's Proclamation, or more simply just Dunmore's Proclamation. And I'll just sort of explain it like this. Lord Dunmore was the governor of the colony of Virginia, and he was a loyalist. He was a Tory. And he's going to issue a decree, a statement that has the force of law. I say it, therefore, this is now the law in Virginia. It's going to bypass the House of Burgesses, and it will just become a law because I say it. And here's what Dunmore's proclamation says. So I'll bring the entire document up right here, and, and you can look at it. Now, if you if you want, you can pause the video and sit down and actually try to read this. It would probably be a smart move to do that. It's tough to understand. It's written in this kind of 18th century legal language that even for me, and I've read it multiple times and I know what it means, is not the easiest thing to understand. It's probably a good idea to try to read it on your own because this will really help you with your reading comprehension and your language skills, but I'll sort of save you the trouble if you want to just cut to the chase. The Dunmore Proclamation has two really important parts to it, and we're going to focus on those two important parts first, and then I'll tell you how the Dunmore Proclamation goes a long way to pushing the Second Continental Congress to independence. So here are the two parts right there. Those two areas that just highlighted in red are the two key parts of the Dunmore Proclamation. We'll start with this one here, determined to execute martial law. That one's not too terribly hard to understand. Basically what Lord Dunmore is saying there is that Virginia, like Massachusetts, after the Boston Tea Party, is now under martial law. It essentially means that the people of Virginia can't elect their representatives anymore. The people of Virginia can't make their own laws anymore. Lord Dunmore and the Redcoats will be making the law in Virginia. Dunmore's proclamation, quite frankly, is a good example of martial law. It's not something that's passed through the House of Burgesses. It's just something that he imposes on the colony of Virginia itself. So the first thing that Dunmore's proclamation does is it says that Virginia, like Massachusetts, now cannot make its own decisions. Now laws in Virginia, decisions in Virginia will be made by me, Lord Dunmore, and I don't care what you think, I'm going to carry out these laws that I think are necessary at bayonet point. So the second one, I think, is the bigger one. The second one is this one down here. I'll read it first, and you can see up here in key term number two. But the second is the one that really is going to upset plantation owners in the South. I do hereby further declare all indentured servants, Negroes, or others appertaining to rebels, free, that are able and willing to bear arms, they joining his majesty's troops. So let me explain. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but basically what it says is this. If I'm a plantation owner in the South, and I own all of this land, and I have all of these slaves in Virginia on that land, if I show any signs of being a patriot as a plantation owner, if I show any sympathies towards the patriots, if I show any sign of being sympathetic to the patriot movement, if I act like a patriot myself, I am declared in rebellion. And if I as a plantation owner am declared in rebellion, if my slaves are willing to join the British army, they can get their freedom. So that's even the way I explained it is kind of complicated. Let me say it more clearly. Basically what Lord Dunmore is saying is any plantation owner who starts to sympathize with the Second Continental Congress 
you're going to lose your slaves. Not only will you lose your slaves, but if that slave is willing to join the royal army, that slave will be freed and armed, and he will be used to put you down. And that is really sobering to a lot of plantation owners. The last thing, I mean, most of their wealth is in their slaves. I mean, in most instances on a plantation, the value of what you're growing, the value of your land, the value of your home is probably less than the total value of the slaves that you own. And Lord Dunmore is saying, if you don't show proper allegiance to the British and your slaves are willing to join the royal army, then you will be stripped of your slaves and your slaves will be armed and they will be used against you. And this really, really upsets plantation owners. I got to be honest, a lot of plantation owners weren't really behind the Patriot cause. Many plantation owners tended towards the loyalist side. And now with Dunmore's proclamation, a lot of the plantation owners are going to switch to the Patriot side. So there's some irony here. Lord Dunmore issues this proclamation in an effort to try to keep Southern plantation owners from becoming Patriots, but the thing entirely backfires. Remember what I taught you before. One of the reasons that George Washington was chosen to be the leader of the Continental Army was because he was Southern. And the people in the Second Continental Congress didn't want to make it seem like this whole Patriot independence movement was just a New England thing, just a North Northern thing. So how can we fix that? How can we get the Southerners on board? Let's pick one of their own and give them one of the most important positions in this movement, namely commanding officer, commander in chief of the Continental Army. And that helps bring the Southern colonies behind the independence movement. But the biggest thing that pushes the Southern plantation owners towards the Patriot cause is Dunmore's proclamation. You want to make a Southern plantation owner upset? Tell him you're going to free his slaves. You want to make a Southern plantation, over, plantation owner even more upset? Tell him you're going to arm his slaves. When a Southern plantation owner hears that, he wants nothing to do with Lord Dunmore or who Lord Dunmore represents. And let's understand, Lord Dunmore represents England. He represents Lord North and he represents King George. Now, we could talk a little bit about the morality of this for a second. You know, the idea, and it's funny, if you read the language of the plantation owners after Dunmore's proclamation, they get so upset and they talk about how dare you threaten to take our slaves away? How dare you threaten to free our slaves? How dare you threaten to take our property? How dare you threaten to incite rebellion among our slaves? This is an assault on our freedom. You're treating us like we are slaves. I mean, the hypocrisy of that statement, you know, to say that we, the plantation owners, are the people who are having their freedom assaulted when in fact the plantation owners literally own slaves that shouldn't be lost on you. I mean, the hypocrisy of this position and, and, and the idea that, that the, the slave owners themselves could feel like they're the people who are the victims here and not the slaves, of course, that shouldn't be lost on you, but it ultimately is not the point of this lesson. What this lesson is about is how are the colonies moving towards independence? And Lord Dunmore's proclamation goes a long way to pushing the important people in the South, namely the plantation owners, onto the side of the Patriot cause more significantly onto the side of independence. So you don't have to necessarily write this down in your outline, but hopefully this formula that's appearing on the screen right now makes sense to you. If you take the way the Olive Branch petition was rejected, the colonies are now declared an open rebellion. I'm going to send 55,000, including Hessians, new soldiers to the colonies. I'm going to blockade the entire coastline of the colonies. If you combine that with common sense and the way it goes viral and teaches people that the common sense thing to do is not to try to fix this relationship, but try to end it with Dunmore's proclamation, essentially A plus B plus C, what do you get? What you get is by July 4th, 1776, a majority of the people at the Second Continental Congress are voting to declare independence. And hopefully this part of the lesson now made sense to you. So this is a little bit screwy up here, but if you go to your um, haiku page now, you'll see below the box um, where the, this PowerPoint is located, there's a homework assignment on the Second Continental Congress. Use the PowerPoint we just did to fill in your outlines and then go to that homework assignment and get it submitted by the end of the day. Don't forget your top 10 lists are just around the corner. Have a